There is a piece of math that is often done incorrectly whenever we're talking with organizations, and it is the per part cost of a 3D printed part. So in this video, we wanna talk about the very common misconception that comes up and how to explain it so that the engineer, the CFO, the VP, and everyone else understands what the actual cost of a 3D printed part is compared against the cost of a part from molding. So let's go ahead and break down 3D printing versus injection molding. We've done an entire video of doing a cost comparison between these, but we'd like to break down the inputs of each one of them, starting with molding. Now, if you look at an injection molded part, you have the mold. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna say it costs a thousand dollars for a simple aluminum mold that's gonna knock out some cube or something like that. It's very dependent upon geometry, so for now, we're just gonna keep the math simple. Once you're done making that mold, very often the per part cost is small, like we'll say 10 cents. Again, we're trying to keep math straight. Now, if you take that exact same part and 3D print it, very often at the thousand part quantity, the 3D printed part will be more expensive than the injection molded part. The injection molded part was 10 cents and the 3D printed part might be 50 cents or 70 cents. But this is where the disconnect comes in. In many organizations, the people who buy the mold the people who pay for the shipping, the people who buy the parts, are in separate departments. And large departments inside of large organizations very often split responsibility and budget around, so the full project cost isn't always very clear. The bill of materials shows a 10 cent injection molded part, but the cost of the project has the molds hidden over there. So even though the injection molded part is 10 cents, which is cheaper than the 3D printed part, which is 70 cents, People forget to amortize the cost of the mold. If you made a thousand parts and the mold cost a thousand dollars, you have it one dollar per part in order to pay off that mold. So every injection molded part is not 10 cents, it's actually a dollar 10. Now, if you're comparing that to the expensive 70 cents of the 3D printed part, the 3D printed part is much more cost effective. Now, there are other expenses within this. In order to pay off that mold, you have to make a thousand parts. You probably have to make 10,000 parts in order to actually pay off the mold and get down to a cost that is lower than printing. But that means that you now have to ship a thousand parts. And while shipping is reasonably inexpensive, if you have a container load of these parts where you have to pay $500 to $1,000 to transport these parts from overseas to here, you have just added another dollar per part onto the cost of these parts. So now with $1,000 of shipping, the $1,000 for the mold, and the 10 cents for the part, you're actually at $2.10 per part for the first 1,000. Again, printing has a 70 cents cost per part. And in our case, we're gonna cheat a little bit here and say that since we're based in the United States, we don't have to ship as far. But if we were making a thousand parts and it cost them a thousand dollars to ship it from overseas, it probably cost us somewhere between 300 to $400 to ship it, which means that you're adding on about 30 cents a part or so to each one of the pieces. So you're looking at a dollar for 3D printing and then 210 for injection molding with amortization but we're not done yet. Now, all of them have to be put in a warehouse and held until they're sold through. Now, for many large organizations, you can turn over that inventory fairly quickly and it doesn't really matter. But if you're a smaller organization or a really high mix organization where you have thousands of these different versions of parts that all have to be molded and stored, now you are storing it for an extended period of time. And warehousing is quite expensive. Again, this is all dependent on what the ultimate part actually is. Is it a big old blocky thing or is it a little flat sheet that packs up a thousand of them in a shoebox? In that context, it doesn't make any difference. But if we're talking about just a simple cube and putting a thousand of them on the shelf, you're gonna be paying somewhere between two and 10 bucks a month to store those items. And if they have to hold out for a year, you've got another hundred dollars on top of the cost of the part. So you have the cost of the plastic versus the cost of the plastic. You have the molding cost, and then you have the shipping cost that goes on top of that. And then you have the warehousing cost on top of that because molding requires minimum order quantities that you have to store and ship around. So if you have a full project where you're ordering 10,000 parts for the year, injection molding, you buy the molds, you get the 10,000 parts, you ship all of them over here, and you store them in a warehouse for the full year, and you have all the warehousing cost, the molding cost, the shipping cost of that amount. And then at the very end of it all, you find out that 25% of them did not sell because 10 to 25% of every product never sells. So you have 25% of waste of the manufacturing cost over there too. I'm not even gonna math that because 
Again, it depends on what the object is, how bad this hurts you all. We're painting with broad strokes here to make the point of the stacked costs that very often don't interact with each other because the cost of shipping is for the shipping department in their budget. The cost of the part is for the person ordering the next batch of parts. The cost of the mold is a capital expense inside the project, which is not part of cost of part. If you have a 10 cent part sitting on a warehouse shelf, everything's good. But that part over its lifetime is more expensive than if you just printed it out. With the printed option, you say, oh, we need 10,000 this year. We say, cool, we're gonna deliver a thousand pieces of these to you per month. And they're gonna cost 70 cents or whatever it happens to be, which looks more expensive than the 10 cent piece when you're looking just part to part, but is not actually true. Because since you're only gonna need a thousand pieces per month, you have one tenth of the warehousing from the other option. And since you're producing these parts on demand month to month, when you get to the end of the year and you're like, we still have lots of parts on the shelf that we haven't sold off, you can say, hey, we don't need any more made, turn off printing for a minute. We'll be like, okay, there might be like a cancellation fee for changing the contract halfway through there, but it would not be the same as a 25% waste of parts because you just didn't sell them. So it eliminates the upfront cost of the mold just implicitly. You don't have that at all. You're able to get parts as you need them. And while they might be a little bit more expensive on the per part basis, over the lifetime, you have the 3D printed part or the mold, the shipping, the warehousing, and all of the other shenanigans that come with moving large number of pieces around versus just getting the pieces when you need, where you need them. And that is generally how everybody kind of messes up the math. But when you look at the full project cost, traditional means of manufacturing can be very expensive. And you can look at all the dynamics of it within the business too, of just having to spend a large amount of money up front for mold for a product that might not hit to if there's a problem with the mold and then you have to change that again and now you've doubled up the cost of your molds and so on and so forth. There's so much that can go wrong over there to where 3D printing is just much more flexible. So if you are able to produce it with printing, you should discuss producing it with printing because it can make a major difference in the overall cost of creating a product that historically aren't really very well observed. Have a great day, everybody.